I didn't hear nobody say nothing. Come on. You know, I'm one of those creatures that I, I, I respond to sound. It's time for us to testify. Who in here really has a testimony that the world should hear? Would you just wave your hand at me? You've been through some stuff. Come on, somebody talk back to me. You've been through some things. And your day is coming. I wanted to share with you today from that topic. Testify. I have a woman of God who was literally birthed in our ministry. Who's going to come and, and share with us today. Can we do something different? Are y'all all right? Y'all scaring me. Can, can we do something different today? Daughter, come on, come on. I, I, I want you to join with us today. Come on, come on, come on. Was you all, she did not, she, look, she fought kicking and screaming. But what God has done in her life is so tremendous. Come on, would you help me celebrate? Come on, y'all got to do better than that. She told me four different times she is not doing this today, but she is here today. Come on, have a seat, have a seat. Would y'all celebrate her one more time? Come on. This is different, isn't it? I love different. So, what does it mean when you testify? I know how we do it in church, giving honor to God. Come on, y'all know the rest of it. Giving honor to God. Uh-huh. Come on, keep going, keep going. And some of y'all put your own ending on the end. We testify because the testimony is what you are sharing with someone else to encourage them. Amen. It means that you've gone through something that someone else can gain wisdom from you. I don't hear nobody. And let me share with you some of the best wisdom that I've ever gotten in life came from my mistakes. Where are those who've made some mistakes? I don't see enough hands. Where are those who have made some mistakes? So today we are sharing with one of God's chosen and elect. Oh my goodness, I can't wait till we get into this. We have chosen this, this young woman of God whose name is Elizabeth Benford. Come on, would y'all clap your hands for her? Her testimony is absolutely incredible. So how I found myself into this space and place that on social media, I saw her in a post that was put up where she was finally embracing her older sister after not having seen her for how long? Bring that microphone up. Everybody want to hear you. 22 years. She was gone and dis separated from her sister for 22 years. And the embrace that we saw on social media was the first time that you've seen her since she has come home mm -hmm. for 22 years. My goodness. So l l let's get into this because we, we talked about this and, and how did we get here? How did we get to this place? So you're originally from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I am. The chat. Anybody know about Chattanooga? Uh -huh. Two people. Just, just two people. 
Chattanooga, Tennessee. What was life like for you in the early stages of your life? Bring that microphone up. Come on. Pain. Pain. Come on, pain. Talk, talk to us. Tell, tell us what that means. Anybody know about pain? Like physical, mental, emotional. Bring that microphone up. They want to hear you. Um, physical. Go ahead. You said physical pain. What emotional, else? Emotional. Um, mental. Mental pain. Yeah, that's, it's, it's a scary place to be um, inside your mind. 40 years of pain, hurt, um, stemming from a bruise, neglect, um, just a lot. Bad childhood experience, uh, a toxic parent. We all know about absentee fathers, but we don't want to talk about the toxic mothers. Come on now. Um, oh my, say, say that again. We know about absentee, absentee fathers, yeah, yeah, and yeah. we're going to erase some of that. I'm, I'm tired of uh, folks picking on absentee fathers. Yeah. I don't hear nobody talking to me. We have strong, every man of God in here, would you just raise your hand and let, let, let them know there are some strong, come on. matter of fact, stand up, men of God. Let somebody see you because they think we are missing, but we are not missing. We're present. Come on, say, we're present. All right, I'm, I just needed my team here with me. So you were dealing in a situation where absentee mother? No, she was toxic. She, she was absent. toxic. Yeah, she wasn't absent. She was just toxic. Okay, okay. Um, me and my older sister, and we have a younger sister, and she's 12 years my senior, 15 years my older sister's um, younger sibling. At 13... I went into foster care with a mother who I knew. Uh, my father was always there, but she wasn't there. Just a lot. Um, I was pregnant at 14. I have four children. Um, I raised my four by myself with the help of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I had a baby at 15, I had a baby at 17, I had a baby at 19, and I had one at 23. No teenage years. I was trying to be a parent, couldn't even get a job. Oh, uh, but God. Hmm. Who knows about that but God moment? Come on, did, did, did you hear that? The children after children after children. The pain of, of, of literally an emotional divorce from mama. But she got to that but God moment. I don't know, is, is there anybody that's ever been to that but God moment? When nobody else could help you? And the folks that said they were going to help you turn their backs on you. I, I wonder, is there anybody that's at that but God moment right now? But, but God, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, tell me what, where would I be? Who in here is living on that just but God? So you, you, you shared with me in our time of sharing your favorite Bible verse and how it kept your sanity, how it kept you out of being incarcerated. Talk to me about Psalm 27. I, 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 you just you just jump in when you feel like it. Verse number one says, y'all know it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Here's the next part. Whom shall I fear? What did that mean to you in your time of struggle? It meant I could come out of my mind mm -hmm. 
and I didn't have to fear things that couldn't control me. Mm. Things of my past, they couldn't control my future. They wasn't part of my destiny. Um, the things of her past cannot control your future. I thought somebody would have said something. Anybody got a past in here? Any, anybody got a past? Come on, w wave your hand because somebody on your row think you perfect. Wave your hand at somebody and tell them, no, I got a past. And I'm a preacher, and, I, and I'm, I'm an evangelist, and, and I'm a missionary. I've been on the Lord a long time, and I'm not tired yet, but you still got a past. I don't hear nobody talking to me. Okay, 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 okay. So, 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 so this verse spoke to you that the Lord is the stronghold of your life. Why should I be afraid? Shouldn't. Uh-huh. To be grounded where I am at the center of hope. This is where my hope came from. Uh, I didn't have any. 2017, I was laying in my bed. My neighbor had a key to my house. I didn't even know where I was. But I looked up and she was pouring milk down my throat. A whole gallon of milk, and I don't even like milk. And Does I'm the body her, good? I'm sorry. If you don't move, I'm okay. She said, no, we're going to be okay, though. Hmm. I don't know. She's not here, but um, she saved my life. Sabrina saved my life. Um, I spent the next 14 days in a mental institution to get myself together. Mm. I'm not ashamed. Oh no. Oh no. Uh -uh. But that wasn't the first time. That was just one of two times. Because I went through it. Uh, wondering what was my purpose? Why am I here? I'm in so much pain. I hurt so bad. Lord, why? Why me? Why me? What did I do? <sighs> he said, why not you? Oh, my. I chose you. <sighs> and I still said, but why? Why me? I haven't done anything. I didn't ask to be here. I didn't ask for her as a parent. I don't know what I did to deserve this. Hmm. And my heard pastor say a purpose and a plan. He gave me 10 affirmations. He gave me a word. He gave me something to hold on to. And when he told me that I was worthy, I grabbed it. And I kept it. What were some of those affirmations that you remember? I'm more than enough. Can you say that to someone who's speaking? As a matter of fact, uh, don't worry about those who are in the audience. What about that person that's watching us right now who, who doesn't feel like they're more than enough? Can you speak to that person and, and, and open their eyes to what God sees and not what man or woman sees? Once I move past what people thought and what people seen, I don't care. I'm more than enough. I'm more than enough. God Look loves Look in that me. camera and tell them that they are more than enough. You are more than enough. Don't matter how many times you messed up. Don't matter how many things gone wrong in your life. You are more than enough. Don't you give up now. God still has a plan for your life. Somebody shout, more than enough. More than enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The pain. Bring I was that lost. Mic. They got to hear you. Bring it. 40 years of pain. 40 years of pain. 
I had set up a savings account inside myself to store all the pain, um, to remind me that those that hurt me didn't deserve me. They didn't deserve to be a part of my life. They didn't deserve to be in my presence. They just didn't deserve. But I didn't hurt them, I hurt me. That savings account hurt me. It was rotting my bones. It was drying up my oil. Um, I couldn't think right. Depression is real. Anxiety is real. But God is real. But God is real. I, 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 I don't want to... I don't want to glaze over that. Did you hear what was said? That depression is real. It's real. It's not a figment of your imagination. Some of us are here worshiping with depression sitting on your chest right now. Some of you don't even want to go home because depression is sitting on the porch waiting for you. How does believers combat depression? I want you to understand that the only way you can combat depression is with your worship. I didn't hear nobody say, come on, y'all got to talk back. If you want to come out of bondage, you need to go into warfare. Worship is just not a sound. Worship in the Bible was an active tactic where God would release a sound and destroy its enemies. Every now and then, you need to open your mouth and release a war cry that is trying to topple everything that's trying to overcome in your life. Is there any Anybody here that wants to do better than depression, it's time for you to open your mouth and decree and declare that I will not let depression, oppression, people, neighbors, enemies stop me from what God has in store for my life. Somebody open your mouth and say, it's my time now. It's my time. Let's stop making the enemy's tactics final in your life. You may have had depression, but you don't have to stay there. You do not. I just You may have been depressed, but you don't have to stay there. Depression rides upon you if you let it ride. Are you hearing me? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Let me, let me talk to this side over here. Uh, what about the folks who didn't want to get out of bed? Come on, talk to me in here. I, I, I wish I could really talk to you. Uh, the, the folks that thought about suicidal ideation, where are you? Come on, don't, don't you act like you ain't been there. Where are the folks who wanted to drink themselves <laughs> until they uh, just wanted to die? But somewhere, God says, it's not so. I'm going to take your mess and make it a masterpiece. I dare you to tell your neighbor, you ain't seen the best of me yet. I'm sorry. Are y'all still with me? So, 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 where did you, oh my, my. Where did you find God? Where did you find God? In the train station. I had left Grady Hospital walking at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I was lost. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know where I was going, and I got scared. And I said, Lord, it's just me and you. You said you would never leave me nor forsake me. That's what he said. That's what he said. Uh, and he brought me out of there. I had no clue where I was at. My mind was not my own. And I had no clue. But I know who, I know who had me. I know who was with me, just waiting for me to turn around and say, I surrender. 
You don't need me up here no more. I think I'm going to go sit next to my wife. I mean, you, you. you working. You working. Say that again. Say that again. What I say, though? What you just said? I know who had me. God had me. I was lost. Uh, yeah, the mind is a terrible place to be. Inside your own mind. I was my own worst enemy. Nobody was doing anything to me. I was doing it to myself. I was reliving every day. Every day of pain. Every day I was reliving it. But them people was going on with their life. They was happy. I was the one that was miserable. Mm. I was the one that was, you know, depressed. I made a conscious decision in 2019 because I was tired. I was tired of crying. I was tired of being angry. Like, it was my daily routine to wake up with an attitude. Let's deal with that. Let's deal with the anger. Waking up mad. Mad. Not 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 just mad. Just 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 <sighs> mad. I want to say the other part, but yeah, I, I, okay. Part, no, yeah. no, we're not gonna say that mm, part. We say it. Don't don't push me because I'll say it. But but talk about what that mad means. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Ain't nobody bothering you. You just mad. Just mad for no reason. Ain't nobody said nothing. Ain't nobody did nothing. I'm just not having a, a good day. That was a choice that I was making every day. Not to have a good day, because I was mad. And you said, I said, who told you God was mad at you? I told you that. Well, you told all of us that. I told all of y'all that? Yeah. Well, I heard it. I don't know about them, but I heard it. I'm glad you got it. Um, who told you that God was mad at you? Mm -hmm. How many people would have taken that and, and just made it their mantra that God is. How can you be mad at someone that you love? So the problem with that is that it's not even about people getting in their word. It's about people trying to understand how much God loves you in spite of how difficult you've been. Can, can, can I push a little further? God loves the crackhead. I don't hear nobody. God loves the murderer. God loves every person that he put on the earth. And it's because, not just because of their sins, but God gave them an opportunity to work through their sin nature so they could come into the fullness of God. We were all born what? Sinner. Hallelujah. And some of y'all was good sinners. Where are my good sinners in here? Come on, talk, talk to me. Some of y'all I can point out. Where are the good sinners? When you was going to do it, you was going to do it the whole way, right? Who told you? Who told you God was mad at you? Find me a scripture, Sister Leland, and find me one that says God is mad at you. We need to get in our word and get off TikTok. I'm sorry, I'm back. So wh wh where, did you, where did you find God? We're going to move to close. Wh where did you find God? In the subway. In the subway. Mm -hmm. In the train station. In the train station. How did you end up here at Center of Hope? Uh, Sabrina. Sabrina. Mm -hmm. So Sabrina was the one that when you were unconscious, she gave you aid. Mm -hmm. Your neighbor next door. My neighbor next door. One of the women of God of our ministry. How did you find Center of Hope? She brought me. Sabrina brought you here. Mm -hmm. Tell me what that was like when you got here. 
I don't know. I was still out of my mind. But I know I seen her. Who? Mother Angela. And I was there. And she was praying. And I had, you know, it's not all over the, uh, you know, right there. Okay. So, so. Yeah, we, we know. We know. Yeah, yeah. We, I was, we, we've had some snotty days, yes. Mm -hmm. Right there. Right there. Mm -hmm. And, and what, was what, what was Mother Angela doing? She was praying like she always As she do. always mm -hmm. is. What did you receive from being in that atmosphere with her praying? I came back again and again. It's been eight years. I'm still here. Eight years. <laughs> Can you believe that word spoken on the altar. And many times we think they're just saturated in the rug. But you spoke a word to this woman who didn't let it go into the ground, but it went into her heart. And it didn't mean that she got it all the same time, but you planted something. I didn't hear nobody say nothing. Sometimes you got to plant something and not worry how fast it grows. I, I thought, sometimes you got to plant something and not worry if people are looking at you. Because when I'm hurting, I don't care what you think. There's something going on in my life that I need some relief and I'm going to get it wherever I can. But God. But God. Stop being stingy with your testimony. You could save someone's life. Let, let, let's move. Are, are, are y'all, is anybody being blessed by this? You came to Center of Hope and you, you gave me a point. What did I say to you in 2017 that blessed your life? Stay in. Your word. Get in your word. Stay in your word. Consistently. It's Stay in your be word. A consistent thing. Are believers doing that these days? So, so in 2017, in the midst of your struggles, I told you to stay in your word. And you've been doing that ever since. Staying in your word. So, so you found strength in the word of God. I found peace. Peace. In the word. In the word of God. Joy. In the word of God. Power. In the word of God. A stable, sound mind. In the word of God. My last point. What would you say to anyone that was going through the hell of life that you have experienced in your life? We've talked about several things about you being homeless and children and, uh, and abused and dabbling into um, the narcotics industry. What would you say to someone who's listening to us around the world and someone sitting here after hearing just a little bit of what you've been through? What would you say to them to push them toward God? Find you a church home. Bring that up. Find you a church home. Say that again. A church home. One more time. A church home. A church home. An anointed pastor. Yeah. And the word of God.
Listen, I'm, I'm done. When she shared this testimony with me, and she shared that she was just meeting her sister that she had not seen for 20 years. And when I saw it online, I, I could not miss this opportunity for her to testify. After telling me no about 11 times, she agreed to share with us. Would you help me celebrate my daughter? Come on. We celebrate you. Thank you 